Welcome aboard our spaceship. We are about to take you on a remarkable and beautiful journey through what we call our solar system. Our solar system is where our sun, which is a star, lies. And because it is so big, it also keeps all the planets that orbit around it trapped by its own gravitational pull. Nearest the sun are four rocky worlds called the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Beyond them lies the asteroid belt, which consists of various rocky bodies of all shapes and sizes. And beyond them lie the gas giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Beyond the gas giant planets lie the dwarf planets and the realm of the comets in what is called the Oort's Cloud. We begin our journey with a brief look at our own sun, which is a medium-sized star. It lies approximately 93 million miles from the Earth, and its visible surface, called the photosphere, is about 865,000 miles across. The sun is a huge ball of extremely hot gas. The visible surface has a temperature of about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But at its core, this rises to about 28 million degrees Fahrenheit. The sun can be described as a huge nuclear reactor, which converts hydrogen into helium, which generates all types of energy with a loss of mass. The sun formed out of a huge interstellar cloud about five billion years ago, and it is estimated that it will re remain the way it looks for another five billion years, so that we can call it, based on a human lifespan, middle age. The sun also has its own weather cycle, which is called the solar cycle, which lasts for about 11 years. During this period, the sun can be stormy, there are violent explosions on the surface called solar flares, great eruptions of hot gas called solar prominences, and sunspots, which are cooler areas on the visible surface. That's why they appear dark, and these are associated with magnetic storms. A sunspot, typically, is much larger than our own planet, the Earth, which could easily fit inside it. You can see sunspots on the surface of the sun using a telescope, which you can project the sun's image onto a piece of card. But never ever look directly at the sun without any optical instruments, as this would inevitably cause blindness. Our spaceship is now leaving the vicinity of the sun, and we are heading off out into the solar system, where we now arrive at our first innermost planet, which is called Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. It lies approximately 36 million miles from the Sun and is only slightly larger than our own Moon, about 3,000 miles across. It could fit inside our own Atlantic Ocean at its widest point. Mercury is a truly battered world and extremely hot on the sunlit side and extremely cold on the unlit side. Temperatures ranging between 800 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It is covered with impact craters where rocky bodies in the remote blast have slammed into it. It also features extinct volcanoes, plains which are extremely old, that erupted in the remote past from enormous volcanoes and enormous sheer cliffs. As we move forward, we leave the vicinity of Mercury and move towards our next destination the planet Venus, which has been regarded in the past as Earth's sister planet, as it is about the same size. However, this is where the similarity ends. Venus sometimes has been described as the planet of hell. It's permanently covered in cloud and is extremely hot, as the clouds insulate the heat and radiations that fall upon it, causing a massive greenhouse effect. Its average temperature at the surface is about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Its surface visible from space probes that have been there using specialist equipment have discovered enormous volcanoes and vast lava flows. Venus lies on average about 67 million miles from the Sun 
and is 7,500 miles in diameter. No water can exist there because of its temperature. Therefore, life as we know it could not possibly exist. Our spaceship is now leaving the unwelcoming Venus and makes a brief visit to our home planet, the Earth, the third planet of the solar system. The Earth is the only planet in the solar system where life in abundance exists. An incredible diversity of flora and fauna, that is plants and animals, wonderful diverse scenery from the ice caps to the tundra, savanna and jungle regions, mountains, plains and the magnificent oceans which comprise 75% of our planet. Its temperature ranges from minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. About 7 billion people live on this planet and the population is still rising. We as a people must be very careful as this is a small planet. We need to control our population as a species and protect our climate and ecosystems, for example deforestation and pollution, as if we are not careful our existence on the earth could be threatened by climatic change and dwindling food and water stocks. The earth is about 93 million miles from the sun and is approximately 8,500 miles across. Around our planet orbits the moon where we are travelling to briefly now. This is about the same age as our own planet and it's thought to be informed when a rocky body about the size of Mars collided with the Earth in the remote past and masses of rock of all sizes was flung out into space but reformed into a single rocky body through the force of gravity into what we now know as our own moon. The moon is only about 2,200 miles in diameter and on average lies about 232,000 miles from the Earth. Like the innermost planet Mercury, it is covered with impact craters, mountain ranges, extinct volcanic craters and lava flows. The moon is important for us on the Earth as well, as it controls the tides and influences the Earth's oceans. Like Mercury, when the surface is lit on the sunlit side, it can be as hot as 256.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the unlit side, minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. The Moon's gravity is not strong, so it cannot retain an atmosphere of its own. So it can be regarded as a lifeless ball of rock bombarded constantly by the radiation from the Sun and the universe beyond. Join us next time when we explore the planet Mars.